Hi, I'm Matt and welcome back to Soil Lab. A lot of the garden soil samples that we get in are often deficient in boron. And so today what we're gonna do is look at different boron sources and compare their availability after one week. One of the products that consumers often are asking me about is, hey, does this borax work? Can I just apply borax to my garden and see an increase in those available boron levels? Well, that's what we went ahead and explored. So we were really fortunate to have a local gardener with a beautiful garden that donated some soil to us. I went and got that soil, mixed it up really well. We weighed out equal amounts and put them in four different trays. Then we selected three different boron sources. The borax that everyone asks about, some boric acid, as well as our boron EDTA chelated. Then we applied equal amounts of those, 0.5 pounds per acre. Well, what's that mean in a garden? That's equivalent to about one gram per four by eight raised bed, which isn't much product. So we do apply this in solution. So with this one gram per bed, just to give you a visual, it's a very, very small amount you can see on this tray. This happens to be the boric acid. If I was using the borax, because it's a lower percentage of boron, you'd see a little bit more. It'd actually be pretty close to uh, pretty close to two grams per bed. But you can see that tiny, tiny amount that we put evenly over 32 square feet in our raised beds. That's why we need to put it into solution. I couldn't put that out evenly as a granular product or as a dry product. So we weighed out these tiny amounts on a precision scale. We then mixed those into water and applied them with a pipette evenly. Now, what would I do in the garden? I'd start off by just getting my watering can, filling it up halfway. I'd add my one gram of boric acid in this case to that watering can, fill it the rest of the way up, mix it really well, and then just water my bed evenly. Now I might do that once or twice throughout the season, depending on the rate that I chose. When we look down here at our boron chart, we're looking at the averages of those three replications. Now, a couple of things I think are notable here. One, the detection limits are exceptional at our soil testing facility. We're, we're detecting limits at 0.01 or less part per million. Our variability amongst our three replications was within that 0.01 ppm. Um, the bottom end of the sufficiency range, the target we were shooting for was 0.2 parts per million boron. And we did fall just short of that with the conservative rate that we went, that low label rate. Here's what we learned. Our untreated control, we started out deficient and it stayed deficient because we didn't add anything. And it's falling in right at about 0.055 ppm. As we look, we saw a pretty linear increase across sources. So from our untreated control, we added that EDTA at, a, at the equivalent of half a pound per acre, and we saw our increase to 0 0.07. So that was a significant increase. And again, across the replications, we saw that the same. Now the borax that everybody wants to know about, the 20 mule team, what did it do? Well, we saw even more increase from the untreated control and we got up to about 0.08 parts per million. So we're really starting to creep on that sufficiency level. But in this study with this homeowner's garden soil, our top performer happened to be this boric acid, which got us up to 0.09 ppm. So definitely moving in the right direction but it still didn't get us into that sufficiency range. So what does that tell me? That tells me that I either want to attack two applications, maybe one at planting and one at bloom, or we could up the rate. Remember, we went conservative at that low label rate to alleviate any concerns of toxicity, which I know a lot of us are concerned about. Um, you still might be left wondering, Matt, why do I even need boron? Well, boron is a micronutrient, so it is essential, but it is needed in very low quantities. But it plays some really vital roles in plant growth development and reproduction. Boron's essential in cell walls and cell wall development. It also helps with sugar creation and translocation in the plant. And it also is very important in flowering, a seed set, as well as fruit fill.
So if you wanna really dial in your garden, make sure you're moving your boron levels in that right direction. And it looks like any of these options would work when applied at label rates. So I made mention about being concerned about boron toxicity. Now, if you're within that optimal range or creeping on that optimal range using the MySoil test kits, probably not a concern. But if you were to just heap it on on accident, what would that really look like in your plants? Your plants ultimately would just look a little bit scorched. You might find some inner venal yellowing or inner venal chlorosis, and then those interior leaves might prematurely drop or fall. Um, so it would be obvious, but again, if you're working within the label rates on any of the products you see here or any other boron products, that toxicity shouldn't be much of a concern for you. Now let's go ahead and talk about our takeaways. I think the first takeaway is that regardless of the source that we used in this study, whether that's the EDTA, the boric acid, or the borax, at label rates, you are gonna be able to move that needle and increase available boron for a healthier garden. I think the other takeaway is that you need very, very little boron to move that needle in your soil. And finally, the last takeaway is we use low label rates, remember about half a pound per acre. You could easily apply one or two pounds per acre safely and still avoid those toxicity effects. So at the rates we used, I may suggest split applications are up in that rate just a little bit, but maintaining within the recommendations. I sure appreciate you hanging in there till the end of this short video. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, and comment below and tell us what you think and what you'd like to see in the future. As always, thank you. I'm Matt, and I'll see you again soon in the lab.